everybody. Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. It's been a very busy few days. It's been a very busy stretch in general as of late with severe weather. Last night, in fact, the whole day yesterday was insane. 1,173 severe reports in total. Nearly 1,200 severe reports. Violent tornadoes being amongst them as well in Kentucky. We had strong tornadoes also in Missouri and also in Illinois. We had multiple tornado reports, even stretching all the way up towards Wisconsin. Don't even get me started on the wind reports here. And these are still trickling in as we speak from yesterday. So there's still a lot of unconfirmed reports here. But between that and the hail reports, it's an absolutely unheard of amount. You, you, it's not a record. I've seen more than this, but this is let you know we were busy from pillar to post here, so to speak. There are days ahead where we are expecting severe weather, including right now, where we still have a tornado watch in effect over towards the mid Atlantic, stretching all the way down into North Carolina. We have a chance for tornadoes over here towards this region. Storms are firing. We do have one active tornado warning in North Carolina as we speak at this current time of the video being made. We also have severe thunderstorm warnings in South Georgia here, and we're anticipating severe weather also over towards Texas around Dallas a little bit later this evening. Main threat with that is going to be large hail and damaging winds. But as we go to the following day, we do have an enhanced risk. It's going to be pushing back towards Texas a little further off to the west, actually, where we have an increased threat for damaging winds, hatch risk along with that. So we could see some significant ones out of that and also a pretty large hatch risk for hail and probably going to see the likelihood of this going up to a enhanced risk, which would be a 30 percent area probably occurring by morning the tornado threat right now is at two percent thankfully but we could see an uptrend with this i don't really anticipate it as it stands right now based off the most recent model data but we'll have to see how things pan out from there still looking at trends as we speak so day three we do start to see a downtrend we end up seeing a marginal risk do i think that there's a chance that this could be upgraded actually yes but I don't anticipate anything major going on with this just yet. Of course, we'll have to see how models trend. 72 hours is a long time to wait, so take it with a grain of salt, especially anyone that's over here towards North and South Dakota. I'm especially interested in that area. We go towards the days four through eight. I want you to pay attention to something. Day four and five are predictability too low, but then we finally see a welcome site. Potential too low after day six. It's the first time I've seen that in a while. So we're, we are expected to eventually get a break from the severe weather. It's just getting there that's been the hard part. So U.S. as a whole, eventually, as we get towards this upcoming weekend, we finally can breathe a little bit. But that being said, let's go ahead and get into the model data here and kind of get a brief rundown of what things are going to be like in the short term here. Keep in mind, I'm mainly just comparing two models here. There's a bunch more I could compare, but I'm trying to save that video from being like two hours long. But that being said, let's go ahead and look at the GFS here. We've got the year over here in the bottom left corner. Go along with that. But you can clearly see both through tomorrow, we have mainly a shortwave setup, I would say, for severe weather in regards to Texas. We see a similar thing on Wednesday over towards the Western High Plains. I do think, again, main area of interest is going to be over towards Western parts of South Dakota, maybe North Dakota. Wyoming's in the action to Eastern Wyoming, maybe even parts of Eastern or Western, excuse me, Western Nebraska as well. And as we continue to go forward here, I've noted something interesting with this storm system, depending on how it pans out. Could end up seeing the uh, Canadian prairies here, maybe having a shot at some severe weather before all is set and done. And this is on Thursday. We also see some action over here towards Texas and the Oklahoma panhandle once again for Thursday. Another shortwave looking setup. Nothing uh, incredibly stout. I think large scale ascent and forcing could be an inhibiting factor with that severe weather. But we'll have to see how it pans out from that point. Get towards Friday, we do have a short, sneaky little trough that tries to pop up here. Maybe try to sneak in maybe a severe storm or two. Right now, say if anything, that would be a marginal risk at best. So we go towards Friday night and Saturday. Still seeing that threat maybe towards Texas, Oklahoma panhandles. It's going to continue to be a little trend for a while. 
But this is where we start to get our break here, where we start to see that zonal flow pop up here right around the start of June here, which would be a welcome sight for many. As we continue to go forward here, though, there are some chances where we could get some stronger storms Saturday night. Do I think this will be an organized severe setup? Jury's still out on that. I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards no at the moment. Maybe towards Texas could be different. Maybe towards the Oklahoma panhandle, western Oklahoma once again. And then after that, we don't really see much in the way of a super stout trough until we get into the second into the third here. This is where we start to see that trough and the threat of severe weather really starts to ramp up slightly just once again. And then an interesting feature pops up here. And I'm going to run the Euro loop back on here again to make a comparison to this. Or have so you can see the comparison between the two because we have model discrepancy with this. But not only does this potentially be a severe weather player as we get through that first week of June, this is going to potentially cause a massive shift in temperatures as we go later down the line here. We'll look at it again once we look at the temperature map, but this definitely intrigues me if this scenario does play out because it'll shift our pattern entirely. We could be dealing with literally a, literally a very powerful positive pna here where it's warmer out west cooler out towards the east and this actually looks like it holds out for a while too so could also increase the shower and storm activity further to the south also weaken the wind shear and maybe help with our tropical situation here or our tropical development situation possibly so number of questions that i have with this setup here looking at it from this level so again, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the 700 millibars. This is where we're going to really see those short waves pop up here. Kinematically, over the next couple of days, there are setups for severe weather, maybe even a couple of tornadoes. I wouldn't expect an outbreak as it stands right now. But of course, as we know, models can change and things can ramp up very quickly. But in any case, though, do see some pretty prevalent short waves across the board here. I do think on Wednesday, the low level jet is a little bit stronger than what I would predict it to be in regards to mod. Uh, marginal risk so could see an upgrade with that so we continue to go forward here so when we go towards thursday this is over towards the panhandles where we're watching for severe weather then the following day we're kind of looking at more marginal threats the bigger threat starts to pick up of course once it gets towards the second where that trough comes in and then after that point i'm not really going to look too much into this because things are still pretty variable after 150 hours of course but if we go ahead and switch over to our low level jet and clearly see signs that something could be up here. This is looking into Tuesday evening here. We do see some signs of low level jet kicking in here. If these storms can manage to root themselves to the surface and take advantage of this low level jet. Tornado threat could be higher. The same thing could be said on the Wednesday threat. Low level jets a little bit more abundant too, especially over towards South Dakota. So. I have my questions with this, of course, but I do think right now marginal risk, maybe a slight risk would be the way to go. As we continue to go forward, especially as we get towards Thursday evening, I am kind of intrigued to see how this pans out. I do think low level jet ramps up a little too late for this one because timing is everything when it comes to severe weather. If that low level jet kicks up a little earlier. We might have a little bit of something to talk about over here in regards to Thursday's threat. Friday, nothing really going on there. And then, of course, as we get further along, the threat on Saturday kind of intrigues me a bit more. Much more low-level jet available over towards western Oklahoma and towards the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, and over towards Kansas. So I'll have to see how it pans out from that point. And then, of course, we're going to see the threat begin to increase with those troughs starting to come in. So another key factor for severe weather is the moisture return. Our dew points are a great way of finding that. So, of course, in the short term, we already know what today's setup is pretty humid over here across the eastern seaboard. It's going to continue to be that for a while. We also see a little bit of a moisture return start to pop up here in regards to the Texas setup on Tuesday. But it does interest me a little bit that that moisture doesn't quite make it as far to the west as what I would anticipate it being. I still think it would be sufficient enough, but if I factor in the surface temperatures being much hotter than what the dew points are i think that helps limit the tornado threat allows the storms to be a little bit more elevated where of course with tornado threats you want the storms to be a little bit more surface based 
as we go into the days ahead here. This is Wednesday. Not an impressive moisture return, actually. So that could also help limit the severe weather threat. Large scale of sin also. Lack of forcing could also play a factor. But I think those short waves could help overcome that. So we go into the days beyond that point here. Moisture return does improve over towards the southern plains. So it does make things a little bit more favorable down the line. So again, I really think large scale ascent in general and maybe some kinematics might help limit the setup, but the moisture is definitely going to start to really come back in as we get further along into June. And then from beyond that point, we'll go ahead and take a look at this, but see ample moisture out ahead of where those storm systems are going to end up being. There's that first trough that will be around the fourth and the fifth. And then over towards the eastern seaboard, you can see as that storm system comes in, you can actually see the swirl as it's pushing in from the north. You see plenty of moisture to the southeast as well. And as this continues to go here, I think mainly towards the western flank is where we're probably going to still see plenty of chances for severe weather and flooding activity over here as we continue to go forward. Eventually, as that storm system continues to push more north, you see that favorable sector kind of shift a little bit. But this will also help bring down some of those dew points as well. Maybe help aid in the severe weather threat too. Like I said, it's still variable. I'll have to see how things pan out. But also, and here's the interesting thing about this, is looking at the temperature down the line here. We have above average temperatures across a large part of the country as a whole here, especially over towards the eastern part. But watch what happens as we go further along here. Temperatures are still very warm across the board here, but watch as we get towards the fifth here. This is getting towards the third, fourth, fifth. Look at how the temperatures start to kind of fall off from that point. Getting into the 60s, more so into the 70s, and less 80s are starting to pop up here. And as we continue to go forward, I mean, we still get a little warm sector here deeper towards the uh, deep south here, but... As that low continues to push downward, it does kind of help hamper things, but it could lead to multiple days of shower storms and severe weather setups as well. So another way we can kind of look at this, and we're going to be looking a little bit more towards medium range here, is looking at the euro, looking at our lightning flash density. We're going to go ahead and just basically look for the brighter colors here. The brighter colors here show the higher lightning flash density. Of course, you're not going to get lightning without thunderstorms, so... Pretty self-explanatory as to how to read this one. So this is us looking at our severe weather, at our favorability for storms over the course of the next couple of days. Of course, most activity is going to be over towards Texas for tomorrow's setup. And then beyond that point, there's the plane setup on Wednesday. See plenty of activity again towards Texas. This is usually a hotbed with all the instability, the moisture. That we end up having towards texas you don't even have to have severe weather it's just going to be a lot of rain over towards these regions which is good and as we get towards thursday there's that spot i mentioned before over towards the panhandles then our friday setup we have the panhandles once again central texas and then eventually we start to see these threats begin to migrate a little bit further up towards the north and then eventually towards the east and look at how high these lightning flash density probabilities are. It's incredible to see the numbers we're getting. This just goes to show how active a pattern that we're still going to be in, even though it looks like we're going to be a little bit slower on the severe weather end of things. But at this point, we'll take what we can get, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, the probability of storms is going to be rampant, as even as we get into June here. So it does look like eventually down the line we do get a break, though, thankfully. The severe weather threat will slow down, but the storm threat may not. So we do have to keep an eye out for flash flooding as we go further down the line here. So one other parameter we're going to look at before we take a look at what the simulated radar could look like is our instability here. We're looking at our Cape convective available potential energy. So we go further down the line here. Like I said, with the amount of heat moisture and also instability across the area. It's not really surprised we have heightened thunderstorm probabilities towards central and southern Texas. We're going to continue to see that trend be the case. And then over here, again, towards Abilene, where we have that point of interest, here's our severe weather threat. We'll take a quick look at the sounding here. If we look at our shear, even though this does have the probability of tornadoes, I'm not too impressed with the low-level jet at this point in time, but we'll have to see how things pan out with it. 
I do think this is a decent sounding though. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that of course as we get into tomorrow's setup. I do think damaging one still will be the main threat with that though. So we go beyond that point. There is the Wednesday setup. Instability is going to be rather limited. Large part leak large part we're going to have issues with this due to the fact that the temperature spread but this does help lean into the damaging wind setup a little bit it does allow for storms to have more outflow more downdraft uh or um downburst ability here and we end up kind of seeing that here so cloud bases are also going to be really high here which helps limit that tornado threat as well interesting thing with these setups ahead here i do think there are a lot of limiting factors in comparison to what we've been seeing course with our instability as we mentioned before over the course of the next few days still going to allow for plenty of chances for severe storms here and there albeit the threat isn't going to be quite as palpable as what we've been seeing of course as we get towards saturday i'm, I'm kind of interested more in this day than all the others right now a lot more instability available marginal tornado threat right now shear's not that impressive at this point i'll actually go ahead and jump this one more scan here just get a look at it I think low level jet's gonna kind of lack right here towards this region right now. As we continue to go forward here, I think the probability of severe weather does start to increase once again as we get later into the part, the first part of June here. And then eventually we do start to finally see a slowdown. But of course, the further out we look, the less confidence I have. So this is very much variable to changing. So last thing we're gonna do here is of course, take a look at what our radar could look like. I know this video has been pretty long. If you made it to the end, uh, just put a thumbs up emoji or something. But in any case though, this is what our pattern is looking like over the next couple of weeks here. Chances of showers and storms, of course, over towards Texas, eventually towards the Western Plains. The following day, as we go beyond that point, as we get into the end of this month and towards the middle, do have a couple of stronger storms that pop up here. Not much of major significance right now. There are a couple of chances, of course, over towards Saturday that I'm looking at. And then as we go beyond that point, it really just looks like a couple of scattered rounds of thunderstorms at first. Of course, the pattern picks up as we get this low pressure to pop up here and another secondary low to follow in behind it. And then, of course, this increases the severe and shower and storm chances in general across the eastern seaboard. So we'll have to see how things pan out with that. Pretty active pattern ahead, though, across the board still. I wouldn't say that this is the most conducive severe weather pattern, but nonetheless, though, plenty of time to see if this uptrends or downtrends. Again, though, thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys all tuning in and also subscribing. Also, members, appreciate you guys a bunch as well. Working on getting some credits set up for that. But in any case, though, thank you all. I'll see you soon. It's been Ty Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have an awesome rest of your evening.